This was super fun. You can make it too. Yes, let's do it. So stick around, you don't wanna miss it. Hello everyone. Today we're going to create a colorful semi-abstract art piece using our own photos or images. And since we're going to use photos in our process today, it means this is a great way to obviously include images in our process, but it can also, if you wish, replace drawing and sketching all together. This is what I like about it. So the good news is that we don't even need to be gifted artists to just have fun and enjoy creating. But even if you are a gifted artist, this video can inspire and help you to refresh your artwork with something new, a new layer. <laughs> I love using my photography, and for me, the images are the foundation of any artwork I attempt to make. <laughs> attempt because obviously I don't always succeed. Obviously. So if you too would like to include or use any imagery in your artwork, you're in the right place. So welcome. Okay, so let's start now. Let's see how it works. Today we're going to start in a different way. We're going to begin the process with something I like to call under paper. And I guess that's what anybody else would call it too. Under paper is basically the paper we use directly below our artwork in order to protect our work table, especially when we use paint. I only assume most artists use something to protect their workspace. So instead of using a newspaper or plastic or anything else disposable, I actually use a large nice paper like a drawing or printmaking paper. And I often use the under paper not just as a protection from paint, but I also use it to test stamps, stencils, I try new supplies I have, or I write myself a reminder. And then over time, these papers become so beautiful and are ready to become a nice background for some artwork. You can, of course, artificially create those papers by splashing paint or writing text or creating marks with a pen using stamps, stencils. But I feel they are just so much better when they happen naturally on their own. And they're a sort of a documentation of your art journey. However, sometimes I'm actually purposely adding paint to the under paper. I do it when I have extra paint on my plate and I don't want it to go to waste. And that's actually another good use for the under paper. I have to say I like many different styles of art, uh, abstract, impressionism, pop art, uh, but I think my favorite one is semi-abstract. Well, I hope it's considered an art style. I'm not sure. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not uh, an expert on art history. If you know the answer, please let me know in the comments below if it's an art style. I would really love to learn and I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyway, as far as I understand it, semi-abstract is an approach where we can recognize the subject, but overall everything in the artwork is simplified or doesn't adhere to reality, like maybe using unrealistic uh, colors. I hope I got it right, <laughs> but I'm trying, I'm really trying. And I probably like this approach because our photos, uh, their nature, even though they are two-dimensional, are a pretty realistic depiction of the world around us. And to me, it's boring. Maybe boring is a too strong of a word, but for me, it's just not appealing. So next, we're going to take our beautiful under paper and we're going to cut it to the size we need. I usually like to use a photo mat thingy to see the areas that I like, which I mark with a pencil before I cut them. But obviously we don't have to use the photo mat and we can simply cut the paper any way and size we like. It 
it's a good idea to cut the under paper with a ruler so we can get these nice edges and it looks more organic. And if you like this process, you're going to love my book, the new mixed media photography book. It's available on Amazon, so make sure to check it out soon. And if you prefer the digital PDF version, check out the ebook. It's on sale on my website, nitsacreativestudio.com. <laughs> okay, so now that we have these lovely backgrounds, let's choose the one we want to use as our background today. I think this one is my favorite one for today. And now we're ready to select the image we're going to transfer. So let's do it. I try to select a clear photo that has a nice contrast. Also, I remember to mirror or reverse the image before printing. And I print with my laser printer on standard copy paper but you can also use an inkjet printer. It's a question I'm always asked in the comments and I just forget to mention it, that you can use an inkjet printer for this process. However, it will be a good idea to protect the print with spray fixatives so the ink doesn't smudge. And you can also use a color photo if you like but I find that black and white stands out over the colorful background much better. So I prefer to use black and white images and anyway, I don't have a color laser printer. And when I was talking about testing new supplies, it made me think about something. I would like to mention, it's a good idea to always use whatever you already have. So if I show any supply before you go and buy anything, it's always a good idea to check and see if you have something similar that you can use. Like instead of matte medium, you can probably use any other acrylic glue that you have at home. Sometimes a supply can actually start a project for me. If I see something that I had for a while and I really want to use it, I will try to find something, some project that will work with it. It's actually great because quite often it gives me a direction to create something. And sometimes the supply itself can spark an idea of something I can do with it. This is actually how sometimes I come up with new processes, like using the under paper for this project. And if I run out of a supply that I need, something that I use a lot, like matte medium, I have no problem going and buying a new one to replace it. I don't feel bad about it at all. It's part of my art process. I think sometimes people feel guilty or ashamed when they buy a new art supply. But I don't think they should, especially if they're going to use it in a creative way. So please don't feel guilty every time you buy a new art supply. Sometimes people might make us feel guilty because of the excessive society we have become. And there's a lot of pushback about fast fashion. And I tend to agree with it. But art supplies that are being used and enjoyed and help you be creative, I don't think we should feel guilty about that. I buy a lot of my art supplies at thrift stores and garages, so sometimes I get the supplies that don't fit my process or I just don't want to use them, they're not great quality, so I just donate them to a school. One of my daughters is a school teacher and she's always happy to receive these supplies that I don't need. She thinks they're really high quality. <laughs> so next we're going to transfer our photo over the under paper background we've made before. And for the transfer, I'm going to use matte medium. This is Nova color brand, which I explained why I like it in my previous video. But as I mentioned, you can replace the matte medium with any acrylic glue. Uh, you can even use school glue. After covering the background with the matte medium, we need to place our photo face down onto the wet medium. And we need to press it down well to create a good bond between the print and the background. I like to use my scissors in order to flatten the photo print as much as I can. I wait about one minute and begin removing the top paper.
After initially removing the top paper, I'm going to let it dry a little and then continue removing the rest of the paper back. Back, the back of the paper. Um, whatever it's called. <laughs> At this point, I wet the paper bag with clean water. And then continue removing the paper carefully so I don't remove the image. I also like to use a soft sponge to help me remove all the paper. So now we arrive to the best part, the funnest part, at least for me. <laughs> I'm going to paint the transfer. And speaking of which, a few of you wrote in your comments that you liked the piece I made in my previous video before I painted it. <laughs> and I can totally see it. But for me, the transfer was totally overwhelmed by the background and I just didn't like it. And if I didn't paint it, it would probably end up in my neat work pile <laughs> and I would eventually paint over it. But anyway, regardless, even when we're not on the same page, I really do enjoy reading your comments. I feel like you're my creative friends that I never had. <laughs> so keep your comments and suggestions and even critique uh, coming in. I do enjoy them very much. So thank you. <laughs> And speaking of which, I'm going to paint the transfer. To be honest, this is one of these transfers I might have not painted if I wasn't filming today. I kind of like it the way it is. But since I am filming and I want to show you the process, I'm going to just paint it anyways. These are some semi-abstracts I've made recently, so that's basically the look I'm going for. In order to continue and paint this transfer, I'm going to use these watercolor pencils and also watercolor crayons. But again, if you don't have these crayons uh, on hand, you don't have to use them. With a little tweaking, you can use any other paints or crayons or even markers. Just whatever you have around. Okay, so let's paint this transfer and see what happens. <laughs> and I hope you're not gonna say you liked it now before I painted it. <laughs> oh well, you can't win them all. <laughs> When I'm done with the piece, I usually like to protect and varnish it with matte or satin varnish. 
when we apply it we have to be careful though so it doesn't activate the watercolors underneath Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful in any way. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas or suggestions for me. I would love to learn and improve my process. As always, I very much enjoyed making this video and creating that semi-abstract piece. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! So we are using whatever we have already. Let's go. And it's not even hot today. <laughs> Creating this. Uh... As always, I enjoyed where I. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I totally forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> Let's just move on. No. <laughs> I don't think so. Sometimes people might make... <laughs> it's actually wonderful because sometimes it... <laughs> so you too, if you like to... to <laughs> so you too, if you like to... I'll just leave it out. I need some help talking. <laughs> this was so much fun, so... So what? <laughs> that didn't sound right. <laughs> Moving on. Bye. <laughs>